Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Cogules Nation. My name is Secret Agent Nictional Cogules. I'm the founder and the director of the Cogules Industry Spy Network and the Cogules Nation. So, you've just installed Cache OS with a window manager. This guide will be for those primarily using window managers, but some of the same techniques that I will be showing off today from the Cache OS wiki will also work if you're using a desktop environment like KDE, GNOME, or anything else. That said, let's get into the installation guide. Now, my CPU is a Ryzen series CPU. It will require that I have the V3 repositories. Keep this in mind, because there will be a choice for some packages where you can download from specific repositories. You need to always check this first. A similar tutorial from AirMax will also explain the reason why I would recommend you basically just slow down and make the decision. I would recommend always using the, the Cache OS v3 repositories. Now, this would be bad news, but it is actually very, very small, a small requirement. I have more of the recommended requirements, including but not limited to the V3 capable. And why 50 megabits a second? Weird. Who cares though? I have some of the recommended. Anyway, you'll know that you've already created the bootable drive for Cache, installed it, yada, 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 all of that stuff. You could use Ventoy, nothing special there. But now, you got something to consider. But you don't need any of this because you've already installed it. Now, all you need is a post-install setup. The first thing you always do. Now, since I assume you are using Arch, I will recommend you use the command line. I personally love using the command line. I actually have an alias called update, which... Of course, I am taking a technique from Arco Linux, where I update not only the Pac-Man repositories, but I also update the helper as well, which in this case will be Paru. It will not be Yay. I think Paru is actually a Yay fork, if I'm not mistaken. Now, if you do not have this, then you'll just need to type in sudo pacman. I'll do a dash capital S, YYU, and then we'll do a double ampersand, which of course means after this, then do Haru, and then the same thing. Nothing special there. Hit enter, let Pac-Man and Paru do their thing. After this is done, go ahead and do sudo reboot. You'll reboot your machine and then you'll be able to log in. Now, I am using i3, which is why I only have x11. Wayland will cause me a couple of problems, but it does work somewhat. Next step is going to be configuring the firewall. In this case, it will end up being UFW, but there is a script that allows you to do this. I'll open this with VS Codium. It is a bash script. Now, with VS Codium, I'll be able to properly set this up here. It is a bash script, which will require UFW and fail to ban. UFW will be installed by default, but fail to ban is not. sudo pacman dash capital S fail, if I can spell it right, the number two ban, and then you should be able to hit enter, let pacman do its thing. You want to get Titus's fail to ban dot local, which will be the thing you will want in order for this to work. But thankfully, he's already provided that in the link I will have below. But you will set some rules for UFW. You'll do some kernel hardening here. You'll prevent IP spoofs. You can get most of this information into etc host.conf, multi-on, whatever that means, and then you'll enable fail to ban. 
and then you'll do a net stat. And you'll basically be able to see the ports to see if everything has gone properly right. I'll go ahead and delete this since I've just copied it. And there we go. U of W and fail to ban, done, dusted. If you want to get into it, you can use App Armor. And I don't know App Armor yet, so I will need to do some research on it and learn how to properly use it. And then you can change the default shell from fish. I did it to bash, so I did a chsh dash lowercase s and then user bin bash. Nothing special there. But you're not here for most of this stuff. You're not here for the boot manager, the GPU, and some of the other things. You're here for the gaming side of things, and we shall get into that now. First things first, we're going to have the Cache OS meta. So for that, in your terminal, I'm using Alacrity, sudo, pacman, dash capital S, Cache, dash OS, uh, Cache OS, my mistake, dash gaming, dash meta. I got to get used to that. But anyway, we have a package list over here. Once you hit enter, it will grab Alsa, it'll grab GIFLEAB, GLFW, it'll grab the 32-bit things. There's a lot of stuff you'll be able to grab, especially with Wine. And it, this is Cache OS's version of Wine. Wine Tricks is also included. So you should be set there. Plus Steam, Lutris, and other gaming-based things will be installed onto your machine. Since this is a lot, I would probably reboot the machine here after the update, of course. So sudo reboot, log back in, and see if everything's going to work extremely well. Next step is going to end up being enabling Proton in Steam, which should be easy to do. In some cases, I tend to turn off shader pre-caching on Cache since Cache is literally that good. And look at the amount of packages I have here. 1,500 packages with 13 flat packs. I'll actually get uh, something started over here. While I have flat pack updating, we can go further. Now, there are some things here. Proton, Cache OS version, is the Proton version they maintain. Highly recommended unless there is an issue with the game you want to play, which works in most cases. If it doesn't work, I'd recommend Gloria's Egg Roll. It really shouldn't matter which of the two, since they are similarly performing. There are launch commands here, and you'll probably want to do that something similar to this, but you will not be using the game mode daemon. So if you do game mode run in a Steam game, game mode daemon actually doesn't work. Instead, you'll be using game dash performance. This is going to be extremely different from what you are used to if you come from other distributions, or heck, even come from an Arch-based distribution that does not have this game performance thing. Then for the power profile switcher, this is the wrapper script, which is this thing right here. Essentially what this does, it uses power profiles daemon to switch the current power from performance, oh, to performance, rather. This will increase the system power levels, changing the CPU governor to performance. When the script is used, the system will be set to performance as long as the game is running. The used profile will be restored once closed. Now, game mode does have similar behavior, but it's not used on Cache as it already ships with this script here. And there are some other things as well with a broken thing on bottles, because apparently game performance is broken on bottles. That needs to be fixed. And then you've got a lot of different things you can do here. Nothing special there. Right? That's pretty easy to do. And i3 is actually pretty easy to configure. So I think I can actually end this video here. Thank you and good night.